for my topic, I chose to talk about canine epilepsy, which is basically just reoccurring seizures in dogs. And the reason I chose this topic is because my dog experiences seizures. Um, so that's a picture of my dog. Um, his name's Dakota. He's a 12-year-old black lab who has seizures. So a seizure is a convulsion of temporary disturbance of normal brain function, usually accompanied by uncontrollable muscle activity. Um, so repeated episodes of seizures is known as epilepsy, and it's the most reported neurological condition in dogs. So it causes um, liver disease, kidney failure, brain tumors, and trauma, toxins, and it may be inherited. So with my dog, um, the first time he had a seizure, we took him to the vet. Um, all his um, tests came back normal. So we don't really know what's the main cause. Um, they may be inherited, but there's not much data that really supports the reason why they could be inherited, so he just has seizures. Um, different types of seizures, um, two main types, um, generalized seizures. Um, examples of those are motor major or grand mal seizures, and most commonly happens when a dog is relaxed and quiet. So with my dog, um, he's usually just laying down, either sleeping, um, and then he'll just get up and start having a seizure. Um, absence seizures or petite mal seizures. Um, they don't typically occur in pets, but if they do, they're referred to as focal seizures. Um, so focal seizures stay localized or may spread and affect the whole brain. So simple focal seizures originate in the area of brain that controls movement. So usually this will start out in their face first. Um, so like rapid eye twitching or lip twitching and then it can spread to other areas and affect um, their limbs as well. Um, complex focal seizures originate in the area of the brain that controls emotions and behavior. So this will affect their limbs first. They could paddle their legs really fast. They may start barking or even urination or defecation can occur. Um, so during a seizure, there are three phases. The first phase is the pre ico phase. So the dog appears nervous, may hide or seek out owner, which results in restlessness, whining, shaking, or salivating. Um, can last seconds to a few hours. So with my dog, um, when we realize he's having a seizure, he'll hunch really low to the ground and start walking, kind of as if he's like crawling. Um, so he'll, kind of, he'll start to seek us out, but he'll mainly just run into things. So once we get him settled into an area, um, the second phase begins, known as the ICTO phase. So in mild cases, um, the dog experiences dazed looks, uh, mild shaking, staring aimlessly, and licking of lips. Um, in severe cases, um, a dog may lose consciousness and body function. They fall over on side and paddle the legs. And urination and defecation may occur. So thankfully, my dog only experiences mild cases. So he'll have a dazed look in his eye. His eyes will get kind of big. Um, it'll affect his limbs. So either his front legs will shake or rapid like twitch um, more than his back legs or vice versa. Um, he does stare aimlessly. Um, he still blinks. So even though his eyes are big, he's still able to blink. And he drools a lot, which causes his lip, him, him to lick his lips. Um, and then once the main phase is over, it enters the third phase, the post cycle phase, which is just confusion, disorientation, salvation, and restlessness. Um, so my dog, he'll be really confused, but he likes to be stubborn and try and get up and walk right away. Um, so we just kind of keep him calm, and once we know that he's ready to um, get up and start walking, we'll let him. And then within a few seconds, he'll just trot around the house wagging his tail like nothing even happened. <laughs> so what to do during a seizure? Oh, that's my cat, by the way. So. Um, you time approximately how long the seizure lasts. So a seizure shouldn't last longer than two minutes. And it's easier to keep a timer like on your phone rather than watching the clock because seizures, once they happen, they do feel like it lasts a lifetime. Um, you want to clear away any tables or furniture so the dog doesn't run into anything and hurt himself even more. Um, you want to keep your hands away from their mouths. A lot of people believe that they'll swallow their tongues during a seizure. Um, I tried looking up more information on it, but I couldn't find a direct answer to why they won't. But you'll, more, you'll most likely get bit rather than having them swallow their tongues. Um, so treatment usually begins when it occurs more than once a month. 
Um, clusters of seizures, so one seizure followed immediately by another. Um, or grand mal seizures are severe and prolonged in duration, so longer than that two minute time interval. Um, different medications, I just named a couple. Um, phenobarbital um, decreases nerve impulses in the nervous system. Um, potassium bromide, which is formulated with vitamin B to help neurological function. And once a certain medication is started, it has to be given for life. And so the funny thing with my dog is we actually don't treat his seizures. Um, reason being, he only gets them about twice a year. Um, so that being so little, within a year, more treatment can do more harm than good. So those are my two things. Excellent. Let's give her a round of applause. Surely that generated some questions or comments. Come on, somebody. Comments like, I'll let you point. Yeah. was how effective are like baby beds that bounce um, to help support the dog. Um, I'm not really sure. We haven't used that. Um, I haven't really seen any information about it either. Um, I could see how, I could honestly see how it does more harm than good because they're shaking a lot. So I figured it would bounce even more and they might like fall out of it. Um, That's a good yeah. question. And like for her case, it wouldn't help at all because you only use only two or twice a year mm -hmm. and it's basically unpredictable I mean so that would be a waste of time I had a dog one time that unbeknownst well it was like Thanksgiving and years ago there weren't an emergency vet clinic so you're kind of on your own if something happened on a holiday and Blackie who somebody had I, you know when you live on the country people drop off dogs and cats Blackie I think it was one of two dogs that got dropped off. One got run over by a bus and I had to, you know, bury it and Blackie was traumatized for life from yellow buses. One Thanksgiving, we hear like this knock on the back door. Okay, we weren't, you know, we weren't expecting anybody. Here it is, Blackie's having a seizure and she's so close to the door, when her muscles are contracting, she's, her head's banging on the door. Luckily I was home. For the next 24 hours, she had one seizure an hour. And all those signs that she showed, the severe ones, she did it all. Defecate, urinate, couldn't stand up. When she tried to stand up, she was blind. The, you know, it was such a zap to the brain. And I, the thing that, see right there where it says, once started, must be given for life. I'll tell you what I did for Blackie. Anyway, phenobarbital is what we used. I mean, because she had so many, right? I mean, it's not like you, you're not treating because twice a year, that's nothing, really. So we went phenobarbital, but every medicine is a poison in a sense. There's always indications and contraindications. It makes them have an appetite. They tend to get bigger, and it's not good for the liver. So I think I treated her for, and of course, I don't know how old she was, right? She showed up. So I'm going to guess she started having seizures at five. And at about eight or nine, I said, Blackie, I'm weaning you off the phenobarbital. Now, don't do anything that I do, right? You <laughs> check, right? You check your vet and do that. But I'm the master of my animals, right? So I weaned her off phenobarbital, and she never had a seizure for years. She died a good old age. So I'm just saying, that's a good recommendation, but I had reason to, uh, you know, because when you age, your brain changes, right? Your physiology changes. So I was thinking, you're old enough now, I bet you enough things change that maybe you won't have any seizures anymore. So there were some other comments, questions. Let's go. So we have like really good family, a really good family friend back home, and their dog had like grand mal seizures. Grand mal. Mm -hmm, and would have a lot of them. Yeah. And so. They like put him on medication or something, but then later on they found out it was like he had like toxins build up in his teeth, and so they had to like pull out all of his teeth. So now he's like toothless, and he still gets them, but it's like twice a year instead of like 
four times. So four. you're saying the medicine had something in it that made or well, they reacted with like the tea? Well, they think it's like their teeth and like the decay in the teeth. And okay. Like the toxins like underneath the teeth. Yeah, like it'd be inter it'd be interesting to know how that worked. Mm -hmm. Nothing's clicking in my brain about that, but mm -hmm. you know, all these weird things happen. You got to always remember. Anytime there's a medicine, there's an indication, and then there's a contraindication. And the contraindication list is like this long for most, right? So, good point. Somebody else? Is there any correlation between the age and severity in them? Like, I know when people, like, if you're younger, you can have benign rolandic seizures and you grow out of them. Is there anything like that for dolls? Um, so the question was, is there any um, kind of, or, uh, is there any correlation between age and the severity of a seizure? And I'm not sure about that. Um, my dog hasn't had a, he's 12, so he, um, he hasn't actually had a seizure this year. Mm -hmm. um, See, that maybe there's age something going on here, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, it's hard to say. The, it, it, it's all over the map. You know, you can be young and have terrible ones. You can be old and have terrible ones. Or, you know, I don't think there's a big correlation. I remember years ago, I had a graduate student, TA, that had petite mall seizures. Or I can't remember her last name, but it was Melanie. And here's an interesting thing. It was related to her hormones. She would only have these petite mall seizures at certain stage of her menstrual cycle. I can't remember, was it near ovulation or two weeks from ovulation? I can't remember. But it was very hormonal. And she would tell me, it'd be like this, she'd be driving I went to my vehicle one time too. I don't know why. <laughs> She'd be driving, and then she would realize that she, for the last second, wasn't really there. Petite mall. I mean, that's kind of scary. But it's just, it'd be like that. It's like something happened just for like a second, and you know you missed something. You know what I mean? And then, I mean, I can't quite identify with that. But she, it'd be a certain stage of her menstrual cycle, and it would be just so short. It'd be just like. Something happened for a second or half a second to her. Petite mall. Interesting. Yes. Okay, we're going to move on. Great comment. Oh, it was more? Yeah. Well, let's do one more. Uh, my brother back home has epilepsy, and he uses Capra and Lamictal. And I know for, he has to take it every day. Is it the same in animal medicine? Or? Yeah. The dog will have to have it every day. Every day. Okay. Yeah, and I can't from I can't remember for Blackie if um, if it was once a day or twice a day I gave her. I just cannot remember. But uh, yeah, and I mean, in the phenobarbital is orally active. It's easy put in a piece of meat and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's amazing uh, the severity. And one last word I wanted to say: if you if they do all these tests and they can't figure out what's happening, then you would call it idiopathic epilepsy. Idiopathic means arising from within, but we have no idea where it's coming from. Okay, then Tess Huffman, come on up. I emailed it to myself. Oh, did you? Okay.